Hello everyone and welcome to the Season 9 Duel Reveal Discussion with my duel partner Sapphire X. How are you doing Sapphire? I'm doing great. How are you doing Collins? We're doing great. We've got a ton of duel cards to talk about. So we have one for each minion type that is being added and we also have some spells that are being added and removed. So yep. I'm Educated Collins. Uh, here's my dual partner, Sapphire. We are consistently top five, I would say. Um, we've been top one in both seasons for duos, so we do have a lot of experience playing duos, and we should be good representations to talk about the new cards and how they have been, how I, we think they're going to affect the meta. So first things off, we're going to talk about the spell that is leaving the game forever, never coming back. We've got Maybe. Portal. Maybe. We've got Horla Nevada, the tier 4 or 3 cost spell. What's your thoughts about this? Well, I, I mean, Portal's probably the best spell in the entire game at the moment, so... In duos. Um, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Everything we say will just be specifically for duos, because that's pretty much all we play um, since it's come out, so... I would say it's, it's definitely the most impactful spell in duos. Uh, it allows for a lot of things that you can't do in solos. Yeah, um, just the ability of like reusing effects that you shouldn't be able to <laughs> reuse, things like yeah. that have been uh, very, very strong. And uh, it it's very flexible. It comes out on tier four, which I think is too early for this type of effect. So definitely think it's a pretty good decision to re remove this spell, but they're not actually removing it. They're just adjusting it by turning it into two different spells. So let's talk about the spells that are, they're re replacing Portal in a Bottle. Let's get into it. So we have Portal in a Fountain and Portal in a Crystal. So Portal in a Fountain is a three cost tier three spell that passes a minion in the tavern, while Portal in a Crystal is a tier five two cost spell that passes a friendly non-golden minion. Yeah, I would say um, overall definitely weaker in terms of we weaker the quality of the pass. Weaker but more balanced. Is is that like your takeaway, or or just like yeah. weaker across the line? No, I, I'd say it's it's definitely more balanced. Um, but as you get into the later game, you're pretty much never passing. Like you're never using a pass on the tavern. It's almost always just going to be from your board to use on effects like um you know like a the four drop quill board that puts gems on everything or the five drop demon that doubles the stats in the shop you're gonna like you know beatbox or minions on your own board that you can pass off to your teammates so you can reattach them for magnetic uh buffing like yeah. stuff like that it's pretty much never from the shop so i would say having the second spell that can only pass from the shop makes the the pass a little bit weaker but to be fair probably more balanced i think this is like a very like elegant way of solving the issue because it seemed to me with the first spell they wanted to make it lower cost right because it went up to tavern five yeah. right and i thought that was like a good place for it and then it mm -hmm. moved down to tavern four and i was like ooh, it's a lot easier to find the spells and like abuse the the passing the um the cards that from your from your hand to your teammate right and just like replay them or or take advantage of that, right? So they're keeping that aspect, but they're keeping that abusive aspect on a tier five barrier where you have to be tier five to get access to it. Where the the standard, like the maybe more normal uh, level of play is, oh, I, I take the spell, I shoot something in the tavern shop to give it to my teammate, right? And that starts tavern three, costs three gold, right? So it's, it's better than buying it and, and giving it to your opponent, right? Because that costs four. So you're spending three gold for that if you get it. But if you want to use the abusive version of the card where you're abusing things that you already own to replay it and double the effect, then that is locked between Tavern 5. So you get to kind of use both of these portals in the way they're intended at the cost that they should be intended for. So I kind of like this change where, okay, the abusive stuff, Tier 5. The, f the friendly thing that you're supposed to do with the, the spell, Tier 3. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah, and to be fair, like when you're on Tavern Three, you're pretty much never passing off your own board. Like you're yeah. just using it as a tempo way to pass off of yeah. uh, out of the the tavern to save you a gold. Yeah. So. Um, and 
I would say that tier five is definitely where the one that can pass off your board and can be a little bit more abused in comps should be because that's where Wellwisher is as well. Yeah. So it, it kind of makes sense to be in line with Wellwisher. Yep. So moving on, we do have another spell that they're adding here. We have Bargain Bundle. So this is a tier five, five cost spell. Yeah. But it does discover a minion, which we do like. But then your teammate gets the other options. So you end up getting three minions for this for five costs. So if you could do the math, that's two costs essentially to get for this spell since you can always sell the minions. So pretty good. You, it is a little inflexible because you don't really get to choose the minions. They're not like Battle, Battle Cry or Death Rattle. So it's just like random three minions. But you do get three minions, which is pretty, pretty big. Maybe you got some synergies. And I do think in some specific lobbies, this could be even better. Uh, just yeah. Well, it's also the only way to fish for specific cards, right? Like, like for example, if you need that Drakari or you need that Titus or you need that Bran, you can't really fish for those with a spell. Mm. But now you can. Now, it's not super likely to hit them, but this can pull neutral cards. It's not tribe-specific or death rattle specific or battle cry specific or any of those types of things. Yeah, so definitely looks interesting. Does it look super playable? Like, are you going to be spending your five gold every time you see this, or are you going to think about it? I'll be really happy to generate it. <laughs> That's true. That's actually so true. that It's, you... it's buffed to things like uh, the panda on Tavern 5, right? Wait, that is so true. You're probably just generating this and then abusing, oh, I got, I got another panda. <laughs> like, hey, let's go. Oh, my God. I could see, yeah. I can see generators getting a big buff because sometimes you get three cards for one spell and, and things like that. So yeah, that's, that's probably the scariest part of the, about this card. Uh, maybe you play it just yeah. randomly, but yeah, generation is really good. It's, it's probably not something you play randomly too much. Like If your teammate's like, hey, you got four gold, <laughs> like, oh. generally the answer is no, but this is an easier way to, you know... Ah, uh, that's, that's a very good point that, that you're throwing, right? Very often, Sapphire is like, hey, I need two gold. And generally, if, you're, if you don't get economy minion, that's eight gold to, to buy one, send, buy one, spend. Right? Now, if you have this, you just, you just cast this. It costs you, I mean, it costs you four, essentially, right? Costs you four. Yeah, yeah. And then they get two gold, so it fixes your problem, and you get a minion, then maybe it's relevant. Yeah, so. yeah and sometimes it's less than four, because sometimes, you know, you, whenever, the minion that you get can be a value minion yeah, that like either gives you extra money back yeah. or so, yeah exactly yeah uh next so I, I think it, it has its uses but it's not something that you just auto pick i don't think yeah okay now we're going into the actual minions first one we have here is the mech minion we have transport reactor so this is a tier six magnetic has plus one plus one for each time your teammate has passed this game wherever this is so if you're a big passer you love Wasting your resource passing for no reason. <laughs> this will be huge. <laughs> uh, but I, I do think when you look at this card, you have to look at the other magnetic tier six that was released. Yeah. Um, so Dr. Boom's monster. This one gets plus two, plus two for each time you magnetize this game, wherever this is. So they're kind of very similar in design where they're big, gigantic tier six monsters that have big magnetics depending on... Either you pass or either you've magnetized before. Yeah, I think compared to the Dr. Boom's monster, I would say Transport Reactor feels a little underpowered. Mm. Um, I, I will say there are some other cards in the set that allow you to pass a little bit more freely. Um which we'll actually get into here very soon. Yeah, and, um, and it does count both of your teammates, right? So that can add up a little bit. But I do think when you're comparing, uh, if you are leading into mechs and magnetize, it's probably significantly easier to just have more times you've magnetized and have the buff be bigger since it's plus two, plus two, so plus one, plus one, versus right. the I've passed like 15 times this game, right? I, I, I don't think in a normal... Like high level game, you're passing all that often. You're trying to pass like really important cards, especially early, uh, where your mana or your resources are so specific. Where you need, oh, I need this to level. I need this to to hit the triple, right? So, I do think transport reactor probably on, on the lower tier of the dual minions, but 
maybe people will find some comps where this is like very big 40 40 50 50s and feels pretty good yeah and we'll have to see how some of the interactions work like mm. for example bargain bundle the spell we just talked about right it doesn't specifically say pass the other two to your teammate it just says your teammate gets the other options so I we'll see if that counts as two passes I, or not like something like that i'd be surprised if it didn't count as two yeah just, yeah it just it just most of the cards specifically say the word say pass, pass on them yeah, and that one doesn't yeah that's fair so we'll see but I, I think right now with what we know it does feel pretty underpowered compared to a lot of the other cards we're going to talk about yep next up we have private chef so this is the naga minion it is a spellcraft tier four. Choose a minion, get a random minion of its type, then pass it. So immediate reactions, this is a chef's choice, right? Yep. Same effect, but you do pass it in the end. But it's a spellcraft, so if you play this, you can do it every single turn. So that's pretty good. Chef's choice yep. is actually one of my favorite early game spells, so agreed. It's a it's a great support card. The oh. uh the ability to have a card on your board that allows you to fish for the specific tribe that your teammate is playing without having to spend any money whatsoever. Like, not even to pass the card. Like, with Chef's Choice, like, a lot of the times when we play, say you're playing Quillbore, for example, I'll pick up a Chef's Choice and use it on a Quillbore, even though I'm not playing Quillbore, to try to get you that, you know, one or two impactful cards in the, the comp. The Jazzer, baby. Exactly, yeah. or the Smuggler, or whatever it may be. Yeah. But with this, you can just have it on your board, and you get to do that for free without having to spend any of your own money to do it. Yeah. So it's Goya's loving this card. It's like I'm yeah. passing and I'm passing. It's, it's a great support card. Yeah. So very strong. Looks pretty good. Definitely a great minion to triple into. So just seems seems good. Seems powerful. Makes sense. Especially once you like Chef's Choice is the like intelligence man spell. You know, like <laughs> I will hit the weakest value minion type that I want and and then increase my odds of hitting the one I, I care about, right? So it's nice yeah. to have like these, oh, private chef, I get to choose what I, I don't want to have and I'll go from there. So yeah, very, very cool card. Next up, we have Selfless Sightseer. Oh boy. Your <laughs> new favorite card. <laughs> so this is a tier four dragon. Vato Cry, increase your team's maximum gold by one. I can't... This card is getting nerfed, guys. I'm yeah. telling you, it's crazy strong. Like the like when dragons are in the lobby, people are gonna have like 18 gold base in the end of the game just because this one card exists. Because I don't see how you ever skip it, really. Um, if I'm being honest, like I I take strike calls too much. That's what Taff would say. Uh, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> hey, hey, we win those games. Uh, and this. For technically two costs, two coins, two gold, you're getting two strike alls, six gold worth of value for two gold. And it's a battle cry. You can combo it with brand. And it's, it's general, it's, you can generate it right through private chefs. You know, you could, you could, you could be looking for dragons now because of this, just because it's, it's so powerful. You can just, it's just, I don't see how this realistically stays like t tier four. Uh, tier four is so early to get something this powerful. Yeah. So even as a tier five, I think this is too strong as it mm. is. Tier five, I could maybe see because like, like if you triple into this, like okay, like yeah, you, you yeah, know, that yeah. So like that one I could get, but tier four is just like tier four is the break point where you can like stay, you can stay on tier four and like be okay. Where like there's enough power on tier four that you're like whatever, but tier five you it's like a bit of work, right? So uh, it just feels a bit too strong to me to get two alls. But yeah, definitely definitely will be picking this up every time. Yeah, I mean it's literally just a free four gold, right? Like yeah. that's that's all it is. And really, it's kind of like a free five gold because you're you're doing the job of the pass as well because. It says increase your team's maximum gold by one, which means that you and your teammate both get your gold increased by one. It's not just you increasing your own gold by one. Yeah. So it's kinda. it's a very strong card and enjoy it while you can because I don't think it's gonna stay around in its current iteration <laughs> for very long. <laughs> yeah, makes a lot of sense to me. Next up we have Loyal Mobster. So this is a tier five, four three, 
at the end of your turn, play a blood gem on all of your teammates' minions. So, uh, you know, if you've ever played Quobors, what is your job? Hey, you like, what is your teammates' job? They feed you the jazzers. They feed you the smugglers. Now you have an extra job. Hey, I've got some minions for you. <laughs> like, here's some monsters. <laughs> yeah. What is my purpose? I, I play a loyal monster. <laughs> oh my God. So, obviously, it's a support card for Cold War, but I, I think it's decent, but I honestly think, like, what I would compare this to would be the five drop mech that gives Divine Shield at the end of the turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To your teammates' board. I, I feel like it's probably less valuable than that card. Yeah, I would say that's probably true. Um, um, and it's less valuable than like a Well Wisher, which is also on the same tier. So, of the tier five support stuff that you'd be playing for your teammate, I feel like this is probably on the lower end of it. It has its uses, but it's not usually what you'd like be searching out for it's more of like a, oh i have this i have three gold left over i'll take it for a turn or two kind yeah. of card as and, opposed to like a, a mainstay in your comp what what's very common though is that someone's playing like omega quobors right and they're super strong and then your mm -hmm. teammate is doing nothing like no <laughs> no joke they have they're they're hoping for you to pass them some you know your scraps right like that's essentially what it is and loyal mobster you can have this in a Drakari. And maybe the mech as well that gives divine shield, and that's like your that is a, like a real contribution to the power level of the team. You know, just having yeah. those just sitting there, and you can have like your poisons in your extra slot until the final turn or whatever. So it well, so I'm I'm a little confused by the text here. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the turn, play a blood gem on all your teammates' minions. Now, mm -hmm. the blood gems that's being played, mm -hmm. like. If you're the person playing the Quilbors and you have the actual buff gems and you play this Ooh. card, or if, say say your gems are ten ten, right? And you play this card, are you putting ten ten gems on each uh, of your? That's a cards? great question that I don't know the answer to. Like whose gem is being applied? Because right. that changes the dynamic. Hundred percent. Yeah, because who has to have it on their board? Yeah, and I think it's funnier if it is your gems because then that means it it stops being a support card. And it becomes yeah. like a tempo. I will heal you. I will. I will make your board huge as well. And it yeah, means so, you can play it with Chalga, Jakari, comps, and stuff yeah. like that. We'll have to test that to see which. Because yeah. uh, I feel like it's actually better. If it's if, like that, yeah. If it's like that, yeah. yeah. I agree 100%. with you. Yeah. So that's interesting, and that's a good point because we're talking about it like it's not, but it actually might be a more aggressive support your teammate that's been helping you for the whole game type card, which is which is, is very playable. Because it, mm -hmm. yeah, so very interesting card. We'll see how it is in live, but it has two different ways of playing, and they both work. Do you think, um, depending on yeah. how it is, could be very impactful, or maybe less so? Yeah, it's just a different play style for each yep. each uh, way, depending upon how the card actually works. Yep. Next up, we have Shifty Snake. So this is a tier four Death Rattle. Your teammate gets a random Death Rattle minion. So. That's quite good. Kind of reminds me of Grave Narrator, that card, like a card that will generate value for your opponent if you can fight, actually, right? Because that's some of the weaknesses of these type of cards is that you don't always fight if your teammate is super strong. But in most early games, like when you have a tier four minion, it shouldn't be like a big, big concern. But yeah. Yeah. So the first thing I thought of when I saw this card was immediately Mystic Sporebat. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mystic Sporbat was a... Originally, it was a 3-drop. It got moved to a 4-drop. Uh, it was put in at the very beginning of the spell meta. And basically, everybody rushed to Tavern 3 to try to find that card. If you were a Reno, you hero-powered it. Um, you looked for Reborn, you looked for Macaw. And it just generated a bunch of Tavern spells for you for free, and you were able to level while still having a bunch of power on board because of it. Yeah. Um, this card may not quite be that power level, but it's the same concept. It's still a beast, so you can still reborn it. Still a death rattle. You can still use Macaw with it. Um, instead of you getting the benefit, you give them all to your teammate. Yeah. Um, that being said, when you do pick up this card, especially if you can get it pretty early, you're incentivized to be the person who's power leveling, because whenever the card dies or whenever it's triggered on the death rattle, 
it's going to be from your tier or lower that your teammate gets. So your teammate can stay on Tavern 3, Tavern 4 while you're on Tavern 5 or 6, and you can generate the, the more powerful death rattles, such as, like, for example, like right now it would be like Goldren. Mm -hmm. It would be the kind of thing that you'd, you'd want to generate. So, pretty scary. There's the obvious synergies with Macaw, with Reborn Scarab, with Titus. So Titus. You could definitely have boards where you're giving your opponent a whole hand of random death rattles and since it's specific right it's death rattles that's very it means the likelihood you get triples are a little higher because they're they're a targeted curated slot so you know it theoretically you could get more shifty snakes right and then pass it back to your teammate like theoretically it doesn't like they they try to avoid these infinite loops yeah. right but theoretically I'm not sure if so that makes it even stronger yeah We're, yeah but, uh, we'll have to see on that one yeah if it, if it allows you to get it or not I wouldn't be surprised. I, I mean, I wouldn't either. Yeah. But I think, I, I think, like conceptually, it shouldn't. Mm. Like they generally don't allow you know, you know gas coiler can't spawn another yeah, yeah. gas coiler stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's... conceptually it shouldn't. But if you told me it did, I'd be like, yeah, I'm not surprised they did that. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, it looks very strong for tier four. We'll see if it's Mystic Sportback level or just like a very very good card. Yeah. Next up, we have. <laughs> We have wheeled crewmates. Oh mo boy! More money, more money, more money. Yeah. Once again, a nerf alert. <laughs> this card. So it's a tier three, six three death rattle. Reduce the cost of upgrading your team's tavern by one. So once again, this is who get free money or well, no, it's not free, but like it's quite consistent free money every single turn. This goes off. And it's tier three. You can get this pretty early. And it's a death rattle. So if B Seren, Macaw is an activator, you could go three on three, roll both of these in the shop, and you the, the game's over. <laughs> like we're, we're leveled. So once again, worried about this one just because it feels it feels like they are disrespecting money in in duos. You know, like Something they added uh, into duos, which I think was smart, was making the leveling up cost more expensive. So you couldn't right. just high roll straight to six and then just win through just getting the best cards before everyone else, right? But then, you know, they've gotten soft on it. They're adding extra money, making it a lot easier. I We've played in, um, in the... in the trinket meta, and there are some trinkets that just give you money. Right, and I wouldn't say those trinkets always perform well. Right, you kind of have to know what you're doing with money, so it's maybe like a skill floor. But for the best players, giving them extra gold is just very powerful for them. So definitely for me, this is a type of card I'm really looking into picking up if I see it, and going from there. Yeah, I think there's a pretty good chance in this meta that there will be games that one of us is on Tavern Six mm. on Turn Six. Yeah, like the, like. It's pr it probably would have happened in this meta, but the thing is, you have to pay for your trinket as well. Mm -hmm. So that kind of it's very hard to level on trinket turn with the increase in tavern from three to four and four to five. Mm -hmm. um, but with the ways to cheat out money right now that we're seeing, and there's going to be even more that we haven't gotten to yet that we're going to be talking about. I think it's very possible to be on six, on turn six, and still have a decent board to be able to co you know compete in the fights to not be taking cap at that time yeah so uh, the fact that this is a 6-3 by the way <laughs> means that it's going to trade with most four drops one for one as well mm. so it's not something that you just play for a couple turns and then have to sell because it's too weak yeah we'll, we'll see if that changes in the future but yeah it looks like a very powerful um tempo and scaling card so yeah, uh, it's basically plus two gold a turn is what yeah, it is yeah Next up, we have Ocean Floor Rummager. So this is a tier 4, 2, 6. At the end of your turn, give your teammates minions plus one attack for each different bonus keyword. But in your Collins, event. what are keywords? <laughs> what are bonus keywords, you ask? <laughs> so bonus keywords, there are six of them that matter. Divine Shield, Venomous, Stealth, Taunt, Wind Fury and Reborn. So those are going to be the keywords that really trigger. 
And it seems like Murlocs will be using bonus keywords as one of their main new engines, things they build around uh, in this particular season, this particular patch. Now, that's really all I can give you. Tune in November 25th for the Murloc reveal. But with that information, we can actually talk about this new card. So you're giving your teammate one attack for each bonus keyword. There's six of them. Potentially six attack per turn seems pretty powerful. Yeah, so it's a Tavern 4 card. It's a 2-6 stat line. So on its own, it's not a very good just standalone minion. Oh. Um, now, it doesn't have a bonus keyword itself. No, it does not. So in theory, you can give anywhere between zero and six attack to your teammates' <laughs> cards at the end of each turn. We're, we're not uh, dreaming about the zero cost buff. But... Sure. So it, it is situational. Now, I will say, with some of the stuff we've seen thus far, you know, for example, the return of Holy Mackerel, um, the return of Selfless <sighs> Hero, uh, you know, but I could probably keep going. Yeah. It does feel like there may be a Divine Shield meta coming. Mm. So just being able to give, let's just say on average, three attack per turn to every minion on your teammate's board. Um, yeah, that's pretty good whenever your teammate's board is, is full Divine Shields. So it definitely has its uses. Now, I will say this is probably a lot better in mech lobbies, like with Morlocks mm. and Mexen. Right. Because obviously it's not a mech itself, so a lot of the times whenever you're seeing this card in a Murloc lab, you, you won't have Mexen. If there's no Divine Shields in, having an extra couple attack on your minions by the time you actually get this isn't really that big of a deal, so it does have some situational use, which I'm fine with. I think that's a good thing. But it, it definitely has some use. Yeah. And another thing is it's looking at bonus keywords in both of your warbands. So it's, it's not just, hey, I only have this and nothing else. But if your teammate has stealth or divide shield, then it will still give you the attack. So it's a little bit more generous in how it's picking up the attack that you're given. Yeah. All right. Next card we have here is, I believe, Two-Face... Doom Guard. Now that is a beast. Well, actually, it's a demon, <laughs> but it's, it is it's a beastly demon. So this is a tier six, three three. At the end of your turn, deal three damage to your hero. Ow! And give your team's minions plus three plus three. Your team's minions, guys. Plus three Both. plus three. Both warbands are getting plus three, plus three at the end of the turn. That is a lot. Yeah, I have. I, I mean, I'm excited to play it for sure. Um, I'm not excited to play against it. Yeah, so my mind immediately goes to turn five Galakrond having this on their board or a Reno on turn six or seven tripling into a six drop and having a golden version of this. Like, just to put this in context, both warbands getting plus three, plus three. So if you have seven minions on your board, that's 21, 21 per, which is 42, 42. If this is golden, that's 84, 84 per turn passively. Okay. With a Drakari that goes to 168, 168 <laughs> per turn. Passively. And I mentioned that there are now new cards that can trigger end of turn effects during your shop phase. Such as Efficient wow. Engineer. Yeah, this card is going to be a stat machine. Now, I will say, if you're doing things like Drakari or triggering the battle cry, stuff like that, you are going to need damage mitigation. Like, yeah, you're, you're going to need the, the, you, to be able to rewind it for sure. You will die. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So that is important. Another thing to note, by the way, um, like this is this feels like it's taking the place of like Felbat, right? Yeah. Like in terms of its its use. Mm -hmm. um, with Felbat, it was demon only. Yes. And it was also it didn't you know buff itself. Eventually. This doesn't say demon only. This no. is every minion. This buffs your Titus. This buffs your Drakari. This buffs your Bran, like, et cetera, et cetera. This buffs your Cleaves if you have your Cleaves on board, like stuff like that. So it's it's a very very strong card. Yeah, I would be shocked if it stays at plus three plus three at the end of the turn. 
Yeah, I I agree. Um, there's like four cards I've we've looked at so far where I'm like, yeah, this is yeah. getting adjusted. <laughs> this is yeah, one of them. The dragon, the pirate, the demon, the beast probably feel a little too strong at the moment, but we'll see. But they are fun. Day one, they're fun. So definitely they try them fun. out if you get them. Uh, next card we have is Gathering Stormer. So when you, it's a tier two, which we haven't mm -hmm. seen many tier twos. Uh, yeah, when we've you, mostly seen higher tier minions so yeah. far. When you sell this, your teammate gains one gold, and it upgrades each turn. So it's a five one. You can buy it, and okay, I gotta say, imagine you have no communication. Your teammate is just pinging your store. We're like, please sell this. I need this to level. <laughs> like, there, there is no sell animation or sell. Uh, there's there's no sell icon to be able to write. You're, you're saying portal this to you so you can sell it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> This is, I will say, I, I like the idea of this card. It has a lot of uses to it. So let's say, for example, you pick this up on turn three, which is your five gold turn. That's right. usually the turn where you either try to buy a two cost spell and buy a minion, or yeah. you try to like sell your minion and double buy two drops, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. This is a nice card to be able to cycle, similar to, say, the three, four that gives a coin to your teammate. Mm -hmm. So you can cycle this to give your opponent the extra gold they need to be able to double buy. Or you can use this, you can pick it up on turn 3 or 4, hold it on your board for a few turns, and then sell it on the turn that your opponent's trying to go from 3 to 4, which is usually that really tough turn to level where you know the tavern costs an extra 2 to, to go from 3 to 4, so usually you have to stay down the extra turn to be able to get enough economy to be able to go to 4 then. But with this on your board, if you've had it on your board for 2 or 3 turns, you can sell it, and your teammate can just go straight from three to four without having to pass them anything. Yeah. So it's a it's a very it's a very cool card that I think is simple but very flexible. Yeah. And it, it's just nice to find ways to give your teammate gold without having to spend four gold. Yeah. Because th that's always a concern. Hey, I need a gold that cost me four man. Like I can't do it. Like here, this cost you two. Like. In a sense, so it's pretty nice, and it's a nice like if you need to like cycle cards, you're playing some type of elemental thing where you're cycling, and hey, you buy this, hey, just give, they just give free gold to your teammate. They're not gonna be sad about that. So it seems fun, seems good. I'm kind of kind of interested to see where this one goes. Right, it has a lot of potential, mm -hmm. and it's a five one, so it's not terrible to just keep on your board for a handful of turns. Like it's not gonna be something that you you know you're like oh, I need tempo, I have to sell this card. Yeah, like. You can definitely uh, get away with having it on your board for several turns. Next up, we have Salon Scribe. Please, do you know, can you pronounce this better than I can? Sand Lane Scribe would be my guess. Sand Lane Scribe, sure, we'll take that. So this is a tier 4, 4, 4 undead. Has plus 4, plus 4 for each of your team's scribes that died this game, wherever this is. So, what are your thoughts? I mean, immediately you, I get automaton vibes, right? Like yeah. that's the the thing that it, like I think of. Obviously, automaton. It's a it's a two cost minion or a tavern two minion. This is a tavern four minion, so you get it much later. However, it's plus four plus four instead of plus two plus two, so it does scale twice as fast in theory. Um, both of them can be reborn with, ironically, the exact same minion. <laughs> um, we'll have to see if there's a way to kind of cheat out extra scaling on it. Mm. Um, we don't know exactly what is going to you know, still be in or the new cards that will be added, if, if there's any support for it or not. But it is cool that, for example, say you triple into one on turn four, you play it, turn six, turn seven, I'm on tavern four and I see one. That at that point is probably going to be close to a twenty twenty that yeah. I can just spend three gold on and just yeah. slam on the board. Yeah, sixteen, sixteen, twenty, twenty. I think this is actually going to be quite good, especially if you have like your Lich King or Tyron or something and can immediately trigger it sure. again. Yeah. So, but generally, like what I like is if you triple into this or you get this early, like your teammate could just roll into twenty twenty copies of this, and you both can play two copies of this. Right, like it, it buffs both of them. So imagine, like this. 
I think people are going to do this, right? Like, there's two scribes on one board. There's two scribes on the other board. They're gaining 16-16. Some of them have reborn. They're getting more than that. And you don't really have to do much else with those cards. They just kind of sit there and scale uh, while you're, like, actually working on, like, getting a real comp in the meantime. But this will, like, keep you alive. So I actually think it's um, quite a powerful tempo unit if you get one early, right? Because the issue yeah, is if you get it late, sure. then, then it's like, uh, it doesn't do anything. And it's similar to, like, Eternal Night in the fact mm -hmm. that you want it to die, so you can taunt it up. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times, whenever you have cards like this, you try to protect them, mm -hmm. right? This is actually different. You you actually want this card to die, so you can taunt it up as, you know, Akazam and, and use the splitting image on it or, you know, stuff like that to where you can you can try to, to cheat out extra ways to make this card die. Yeah, so seems pretty powerful. Maybe not as like powerful as some of the others we've seen, but definitely is a pretty good tempo option for uh, players that want to do that. So yep. those are the new cards. If you want to see the full image, we do have a picture of all the dual cards in one slide, so you can just take a look at that screen, share it, share with your friends, talk about each particular card here. So there's a lot here um, to talk about. Hopefully you guys discuss it amongst yourselves. What are your thoughts? What are your favorite ones? Which ones will you be picking up day one? Which ones will you be avoiding for the rest of the season? <laughs> but yes, hopefully that's all we got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and the discussion. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you in the battlegrounds. Patch goes live on December 3rd, and we hope to see you guys there. Take care, everyone. And scene or whatever. Cut. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>